some headroom. Yeah. yeah, I need some headroom there. All right, you got him, Gideon. All right, Gideon got me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, that's one thing about having a trained panel. All right. <laughs> we, we get right to it. Yes, yes, we get right to it. All right. This is the arena. Oh, yeah. Black Sun and the Hizzle uh, for Shizzle Dizzle. We got an excellent show here, but today I want to say the views and opinions and expressions that of the arena does not reflect those of Comcast, its studio, staff, or associates. With that being said, we're going to deal with banning the box. Yes, banning the box. What am I talking about? Well, if you're from Maine, or I think it's Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Massachusetts, Massachusetts who has got an incline on their employment, mm -hmm. has banned the box. Oh, you can't hear me? No. Okay. What? Okay. A little technical. Stay focused. Stay in focus. Thanks, Gideon. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get right to it. Man the box, we're going to explain what it is. So to my right, I want to introduce the lovely Charmaine. How you doing, Charmaine? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Explain to the audience who you are. Um, I am the chapter director for 9 to 5 Atlanta. Okay. Uh, 9 to 5 Atlanta is an organization that organizes working women to improve their working conditions. Okay. And so Band the Box is one of the campaigns that we took on around ending employment discrimination in the workplace. Okay. I'm going to have to bring you two back on to talk about the unions, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'd love so to. <laughs> we're going to do the Band the Box, and y'all going to have to return to talk about these unions down here in the South. You know? Or the non existence. The non existence. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> and to her right, we're going to get the junior. Unions in Georgia, y'all. We're gonna get these unions. And to her right, we got the lovely Miss Wynn. How you doing, Miss Wynn? I'm doing fine, and you? I'm doing good. Explain to the audience who you are. My name is Marilyn Wynn, and I am the organizer for 9 to 5 Atlanta. Yes, yes. You're gonna come back for the union thing, right? We're going to try to get one going. <laughs> oh, well, that's right. That's right. This is where it starts. All we right. seen worldwide here. All right. You know, Palestine, Saudi Arabia. Cuba, Honduras, we've seen all over. Okay. Korea. And Korea, oh yeah, Korea, North Korea. Kim Jong-un, he's a big fan. <laughs> he's a big fan, you know. He's like, ah, oh, the Black Sun, I like Black Sun. Yanga. West Side. Okay. <laughs> to, her, to her right, we got the king. Uh-oh. <laughs> king. Yeah. Of the Hebrew Israelites, uh, Gedon ben Israel. Well, Gedon ben Yashara, all oh, I be your servant, wretched. You be the king. Uh, whatever, my brother. I'm your servant. You be the king, Gideon. Thank you for allowing I don't allow me to be servant on slaves on here. Hey, somebody got to clean up after this. No. <laughs> <laughs> and to his right, we got brother Yanga. What's good, man? The it's, chair. It's always good. Yeah. Explain who you are, Yanga. Uh, right. Yanga Krumah. Chairman of the New Black Panther Party, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, regional rep, Southeast regional representative. Man, just, you know, poet, revolutionary. All right. Goes on, but right now doing the arena thing and always good to be here. And Yanga has his own show. camera there. I'm sorry. Yeah, Yanga has his own. There you go. All right. Got, All right. They got the, the Yanga rusty cam. Back. Right. They got Yanga the Yanga cam, cam on. Yeah, Yanga cam. <laughs> Yanga cam. Cool. We got the no, Yanga this, cam. Right. All right. Falling asleep back there in the, the rusty back there, but we got the Yanga cam, y'all. All right. We gonna get right to it. Yeah. Let's get to it. Let's get okay. to it. I mean, before the show, we were actually like in this deep, <laughs> deep yeah. discussion. You know what I'm saying? And and basically, let's go a little bit. Let's let them start it off and tell us a little bit about what Band the Box. Let's you know if we can do a little bit about your organization, okay. and then a little bit about what Band the Box is and what you hope to accomplish. And we can just take it from there. That's right. Okay. Well, I can start off by giving the history of Nine to Five. Um, like I said, we organize working women to improve their working conditions. So we'll fight for paid maternity leave or paid sick days, anything to improve the working conditions. But one of our core values was to end or is to end all employment discrimination. And so that's how the Band the Box campaign came about. We had members at the time, Miss Marilyn was a very active member of 9 to 5, and we had other members who had criminal records and they were bumping up against that wall every time they went to apply for a job. Couldn't get it because they had to check that box. So in 2011, it was spring of 2011, we had a community meeting, we got together and we just started talking about what are some things that we can do to address this form of discrimination. And what came out of it is um, we committed that we wanted to launch a Ban the Box campaign in the city of Atlanta. And so banning the box, it refers to that box on employment applications that an individual has to check, basically asking, have you ever been convicted of a felony? Um, do you have a criminal record? Like it's asked in a variety of ways, but it's basically getting to 
do you have any type of criminal record? So our first goal was to get the city of Atlanta to remove that question from em city employment applications. Not private employers, but just city employment applications because we wanted the city of Atlanta to set that example. Like it's hard to ask private employers to do this if the city hasn't done it. So we want That's the city right. to be an example of it. Right, because the city collect taxes from the uh, formerly incarcerated when they do mm -hmm. find employment, right? Of course. So I'm, I'm a little confused here why they would even attempt to ask that question and you know. You know and go through that. Right. My thing is, mm -hmm. you said in the nine to five, uh, nine to five Atlanta has increased the workplace for women and then one of the things that you were taking on was ban the box. Did you find a lot of women was, did you find a lot of women who were running across this problem of being, and was that surprising? You know, cause when you hear yeah. about formerly incarcerated people and the box, naturally I think the first thing that comes to a lot of people's mind are brothers. Yeah. So to sit here, when I heard about you guys coming on to the show, I was really excited. And but I think that's the problem is that a lot of people don't know that black and Latino women are one of the fastest growing prison populations. Mm, that's right. So mm -hmm. women run up against that a lot and there's not, because we only think of African American men or Latino males as being impacted by it, there's not a lot of support for women. Mm. And I can let Miss Marilyn speak to it directly because she's gone through it firsthand. Okay. Uh, okay. So there, uh, like Charmaine said, there is not a lot of support for women. Um, I can remember, and I am from incarcerated, so I do remember as coming out of the system, uh, they have a program called Top step. Went through top step looking to be placed on some type of position but there wasn't any. Mm. So um, moving forward uh, going to apply for a job question was the box wasn't there but the question was have you been at this time locked up. Mm. So I was saying yes and I noticed I was was not getting anywhere and actually really wanted a career not to go to jail. Mm. Um, so um, during this time, I told myself, well, you know, I really need to work. I don't want to go to jail. So I started saying no. So I was actually getting jobs by saying no. But during a period of time, I guess they would decide somewhere down the line, do a background check, which I was terminated for falsifying information, they say, but actually I was terminated because- For being you and formerly So you're saying <laughs> that you used right. to say no. And and it's funny that you say that. You say when you said no, you would get the job. Yeah. Right. But I noticed on those applications, one of the things they say, they say this may not necessarily disqualify you from, from employment. Right. But here we hear Sister Williams saying that when she said when? no, then it wasn't a problem. But as soon right. as the background, Test, right. test came up, right. uh, it was a thing. So this is kind of like, you know, I mean, I can't say double jeopardy, but isn't that like the scarlet letter, so to speak? Mm -hmm. Isn't mm -hmm. that like some type of, you know, Even. how did that impact, how did that affect you as when you, you know, coming out and having that, trying to get the jobs? Actually, it affected me deeply because I ended up going back to jail mm -hmm. once I was terminated because uh, falsifying information, mm -hmm which is having that background. And then I go back to what I, I originally, my crime was. Mm -hmm. So I actually went back to jail. So what it does is when you come out on that second go round, you look, when you go to apply for a job, you look and you see that box, it automatically, you sitting there, you're looking at it, you're, you're automatically thinking, <laughs> now do I want to tell the right, truth? Exactly. Do I want right. to tell a lie? Some people, it, 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 it actually makes your heart pump yeah, fast. Exactly. I mean, it just right. changed your whole demeanor mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what do you do now mm -hmm. you know so um it, it, it's just it's, but it's a matter of survival it's, it's a matter of survival right. and it's it stigmatizes you for mm -hmm. the rest of your life you know it's you're already stereotyped if you even think about talking about you've been mm -hmm. convicted of anything mm -hmm. let's move into prison for it mm -hmm. Well, when we talk about this issue of incarceration, our people certainly have been gotten an unequal amount of incarceration and, and sentencing. Mm -hmm. But what do you think is going to be the the changing component that will help our people who have been uh, had classified as felons begin to re? institute themselves into the system because the system is designed to criminalize the poor uh -huh. and that's right. basically what it's doing and that's what this fe whole felon issue in my estimation is about but with that having been said we have to overcome yeah. which is what we've done which is why we're here uh -huh. at this point what would you say would be the method for those who have the felon stigma what do they need to do to try to get beyond that stigma first of all you're going to have to be honest. 
You have face to, it. Go you ahead don't and have face to the face, fact that you're you got to face the music. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. You got to be honest. Number one. The other one is persevere. It's not going to be easy, but it can be done. You know, I'm a true believer in the higher power. Right. And like you said, I may close the door, but keep knocking. I actually, when I got my first job, which was six years ago, where I could say that I'm a formerly incarcerated individual, they told me I can't give you a job. Mm. I said, you know what? Y'all give people jobs with backgrounds. I don't know nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna keep coming. Every Tuesday when they had orientation, guess who was there? Exactly. I was there. Exactly. And finally, the guy looked at me, he said, you really want a job? I said, no, I, need, I really need a job. That's right. They actually gave me eight hours a week. Mm. Mm -hmm. eight, not eight hours a day, Right. eight hours a week. But I took that eight hours. It was a start. I took that eight hours and made that eight hours 39.75 hours because we was not allowed to work 40 hours right. because they have to give us benefits. Right. So I, I'm I'm a little confused here. What what is the I mean the penalty? Like if I'm a co corporation and I hire a convicted felon, what what is the what is the uh, liability? Well, they feel that they feel that if you commit some type of other crime mm -hmm. or you hurt someone, they are liable for your actions. But actually, the U.S. Department of Labor, U.S. government has insurance in right. lined up for that but a lot of people don't know that they call it bonding letter mm, i right. don't use the word bonding letter mm -hmm. employers don't use bonding letter they don't know what it is right. right so it's all about educating and language it's like now i do a workshop uh, with formerly incarcerated individuals and some transition houses in different places and when i do that job readiness workshop i don't talk about uh, bonding letter. I talk about the insurance that the U.S. government has in place for us if an employee feel like we are liability to his company, which is free of charge to him. Right. Now, we, before we get too far afield, uh, if people want to get involved with that, uh, your class or whatever, how would they be able to contact you? They would just um, call 9 to 5 at 404-222-0037 mm -hmm. and ask for Charmaine Davis or Marilyn Wynn and uh, again the number is 404-222-0037 and we're 9 to 5 Atlanta we're in the IBEW building mm -hmm. and uh, these workshops is free of charge mm -hmm. that's right mm -hmm. now let me ask you this awesome. because brother Yanga really mentioned earlier about double jeopardy and I want to see what your thoughts are because here a person has been caught mm -hmm. been arrested done time then been released so when you've done your time, therein lies where you feel supposedly paid your debt to society. Right. Now, then you get out on say. the street and you have this stigma, the scarlet letter, like with all this sign that you had to put on your head when you go to your employer in the States, I'm a felon. Mm -hmm. Well, what was the sense in you going during the time and being incarcerated? Right. You really have never been exonerated right. from that position. What do you see that as being a, as one who formerly wore a Maybe still to uh, wore that. Uh, I, I see that as a design to keep you repeating the system. Now we have private prisons. That's right. So that is a design to keep you repeating the system so they can keep getting that twenty one thousand and forty three dollars per year for you. Oh my goodness. Is that That's per person? Right. Per person. Um, well, let me ask you a question, Ms. Wynn, because I'm, um, now, Gideon and I and Yanga, well, Yanga, we on one side, Gideon's on the other. Um, how do you feel about the um, politicians pandering the votes of the formerly incarcerated? I mean, how does that... You know, again... I and they ain't done nothing for them. No, no, but I'm <laughs> saying, what I'm saying, Gideon, is that apparently you, you just keep screaming that the vote ain't don't matter, but then they're pandering the convicted felons. They even had cases where they were registering people to vote in the jails. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. How's right. your take on that, Ms. Wynn? I, I, I really, I, I think, again, it's all about education. Education. Um, you know, before I got into what I'm into now, it's a lot that I didn't know about voting. Okay. Again, we as individuals with backgrounds need to be educated on who we are voting for. You nice. know, people come up during election time say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But just get, just to say, check this out. Go back before they start voting and that's see right. what they was doing then. That's right. Then that's how I choose who I want to vote for. That's right. Uh, and I think it's a good thing 
that they are registering to vote so we know what to do with it yes we have to learn what to do with it that's right and i want every formerly incarcerated individual to vote but know the person that you're going to vote for so miss wayne are you saying there's power in the vote there yes it is so my question is for nine to five what made this okay. like out of all the things that you guys handled um from discrimination in the workplace towards women and i'm sure maternity leave and unions. Maternal, yeah, no, unions, unions and things of that nature. What made this like man the box or this thing with the felons the major issue, the one that you're saying, okay, we really need to tackle this and go into this mm -hmm. as hard as you're going? Yeah, it's just an issue that was so deeply felt by our members. Mm -hmm. You know, like this really determines if someone's able to earn a livelihood or not. Mm -hmm. Like some of the benefits that we advocate for, um, they're definitely needed for people to be able to balance work and family. Mm -hmm. But if you can't even gain employment, you you can't pay your rent, That's you right. can't pr provide housing for yourself or family members, it really impacts your livelihood. Yeah. So when you're talking to women like Miss Marilyn and other women who have been involved with the Ban the Box campaign, this is not something that they look upon casually. Mm -hmm. Like they realize the necessity of it. So the issue is really deeply felt. So it's not hard to get those folks who are feeling it deeply mm -hmm. to be really committed to the campaign and push it forward. Mm -hmm. So I would say those who are part of the Ban the Box committee are some of our most committed members yes. because this really is their livelihood. It's not just an issue of, well, this may make it hard for me to be able to balance this work life. Like, no, like you won't. It, you're literally going to be evicted if you don't have a job. Mm -hmm. So it's something that impacts people to their core. Absolutely. And, now, I wanted to ask this question for uh, both of you, because when we talk about the civil rights community, they tout that they have our best interests at heart and that mm -hmm. they have been supporting. <laughs> I mean, we talk oh, about the uh, prison industrial complex. Mm -hmm. It has expanded exponentially. Mm -hmm. What would you say would be the responsibility of the civil rights community, if any? And should they, when she talked about the bond letter, should things like that be involved in some type of curriculum or classes that uh, the community come through through the civil rights communities that's already set up to support our community? Mm -hmm. In my opinion, for African Americans, Latinos, people of color, period, this is a civil rights issue of our time. Like when you think about one in 14 African American children having a parent who's incarcerated, one in three black men having some type of encounter with the criminal justice system. When someone is locked up, that means that they're not being contributing members of their communities. They're not able to provide for their families. It, you even see a direct correlation between high incarceration rates among black folks and the decline in marriage rates. Mm -hmm. So you That's see the right. impact that it's had on black families. And so for me, this needs to be a priority for every civil rights organization that claims that they're really advocating on behalf of people of color. So I think it needs to be their number one priority. Why do you think, why, why do you think it isn't? Oh, I can answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't want to put it on the spot. I can answer that because you got the bourgeoisies mm -hmm. and stick their nose up, and that's why you had people like Tupac Shakur that had to form Thug Life. Mm -hmm. Thug Life. See, people that get the misconstruction yeah. when Tupac went to jail for the second time. Right. The prisoner said, "Yo, Tupac, you got the opportunity to represent and be our voice." Come on. Man. That's what Thug Life meant. Right. Meaning, you know, we, you know, they got us as the thugs, and so now that Tupac was in there for a second time he said man we know you're gonna get out right. you represent our voice that's right mm -hmm. that's what thug life boy. <laughs> and i think some of it too is follow the money come on, yeah. like, come on. Come on. these yeah. different organizations who are they receiving money from mm -hmm. like you'll right. go to one NAACP. of their conferences <laughs> right <laughs> you'll go to different conferences and you'll see the sponsors behind them yes. Yes. and if those sponsors are benefiting from incarcerating people that Peace. free labor mm -hmm. then why are they going to make it an issue or make it at their number one priority to eliminate this type of discrimination Absolutely. so i think it's it's twofold. That's you have right. to follow the money. Okay. Uh, well, a lot of a lot of I think the, the problem whole thing with me is when we talk about the civil rights period that keeps it a national Ooh. issue. Come on. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? And as me as a revolutionary, I think that we have issue. it is an international issue. It is a violation of human rights. Come on. And it's yeah. just we as Africans here in America realizing and, and let the world know that our human rights are being violated the same way that they're vi violating human rights in Palestine and all over the other world. Yes, sir. That I, I, it's happening to us right That's here. Right. But as long as we keep it civil, then they have the leeway and they have the law on their side to tell the world to stay out of it. That's right. It's not really a, a good look. Is not really being take, taken. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We're systematically being oppressed yeah. on no other uh -huh. reason but our ethnicity exactly. that we're Africans here in America. Exactly. 
So I mean, so you know, it's like what she's saying. The sister was saying, when you um, talk about the civil rights, man, some of their sponsors, it's all about integration and and agglomizing and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and exactly. all that other stuff and <laughs> being American and so homogenized. So when we talk about when we look at it from that standpoint, then the whole thing is it's going to be about the money flow. Right. Mm -hmm. It's going to be about the you know America and, and I have to say this a lot of times. A lot of times practices a little bit of fascism uh -oh, you know on. what I'm saying so a lot of it is about what's better for America as a whole and not what's better for the people right uh -huh. that she houses mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying That's so right. we have to take it from a straight uh, civil rights not just a not just a civil rights violation but we have to present it to the world as a human rights violation uh -huh. like Susan was saying why right. is it that one in three every African males have had some type of interaction with the justice system that's not by happenstance no uh -huh. not at all uh -huh. ladies and gentlemen well, my sister right here, I wanted to hear, because I wanted to hear, I mean, we got Al Sharpton, all right, Jesse okay. Jackson, these are people in our generation that have come up, and yet this issue of the felony and its implications are not being handled by these civil rights organizations, or would you say, let me not put words, what would you say? <laughs> I, I really feel like, um, I feel like Charmaine, in, so to speak, and uh, it's all about sponsorship, it's right. all about the money, right. um, and uh, who is sponsoring who, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't want to lose it, mm -hmm. exactly. and, and so they uh, closing their eyes, they blind to whatever's happening, mm -hmm. you know, they dip in a little bit here mm -hmm. and a little bit there, mm -hmm. but eventually it's just like the Trayvon Martin yeah. and the uh, um, Kendrick Johnson. Exactly. Mm -hmm. From the beginning, right. it's all up in the air. That's all you hear. Yeah. But when the money come through, it die down, then you hear nothing else. Well, yeah. Absolutely. I just want to touch on that because that was the thing I said about, like with the Trayvon Martin thing. Right. All of us, we rallied. We went to Florida. Right. The thing that I pointed out, I was like, okay, but what hotels are you staying in? Oh. You know what I'm saying? And why the Skittles went through the roof. <laughs> yeah. The others was protesting with Skittles and I see. Yeah. So those companies went with hoodies. You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh, so wow. jerseys and hoodies went through the roof. So we have to even in our protest, we have to be a thinking people. Uh -huh. So like the sister is saying that it's all about, it boils down to the money, it boils about the money, and so we have to have, this is one of the things why, where you and I do disagree sometimes, Guinea. I don't think that, <laughs> I'm not a reformist, so I don't think that politics will be the be-all solution for the African here in America, but I am a stra uh, general, so I believe in strategies. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we have to have those lobbyists, mm -hmm. and we have to have yep. people pushing the policies, and we have to have the voting power. Mm -hmm. Like Sun and I always talk about, even if you don't vote, mm -hmm. that when you register to vote, mm -hmm. when those Democrats and those Republicans see that these Africans, are how many yeah. people have that voting power, mm -hmm. they will be knocking down our right. doors right. to get that voting power. We just right. have to stop giving our votes away free to the Democrats right. and start making these other groups come to us and cater to our needs because right. we had the voting right. 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 I mean a perfect example of that even with immigration reform being mm, such a hot right. topic. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's a growing Latino population that's that absolutely. can vote. That's right. Not because people are now waking up and seeing the way that we're treating immigrant populations are inhumane. Mm -hmm. No, it's about this is a new voting block that's so right. now let's pander to them. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's where voting becomes significant. Right. Yeah. Can I just interject for just a Please. minute here? You guys see just how Charmaine mentioned a big block of it mm -hmm. voting uh, block mm -hmm. now I'm going to attack this on several fronts. Mm -hmm. Gideon. Yes. <laughs> oh, let, let me just say this. Let, let me just go on record. Uh, when Roy Barnes was going against uh, Nathan Deal, right. you know he campaigned with Young Jeezy, mm -hmm. Gucci Man, and T.I. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now this is right after they're registering people to vote. Who you think that voting block was, Gideon? Mm -hmm. Exactly. The convicted felons. Right. Mm -hmm. So the way that the so-called white man, the devil that you talk about, about right. thinking it's like you know what they see numbers that's it yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's you it got a potential voting block here exactly. that's it. Mm -hmm. exactly so now you know you're giving these convicted felons they write back so i don't you get in i don't want the civil rights and all them because they were the same people that's talking about oh you convicted felon we're gonna take that charge mm -hmm. because tupac was a black nationalist mm -hmm. just like mamia and just like malcolm so does that that's our responsibility mm -hmm. as nationalists mm -hmm. to make sure that we be their voice mm -hmm. because like you said charmaine said you know they want to jump on just follow the money trail mm -hmm. exactly we'll be there no matter what trail it is right. you know what i'm saying right. so we're gonna be their voice right. screw those people that's right. black son saying that. that's why i say the views and opinions <laughs> 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 so when 
I say it's screw them people that's coming from the black sun. Yeah. Right. But I'm saying as a black nationalist, proudly. Mm. Well, let me just say you this know. briefly because at the end of the day, we have to look at the numbers. When we talk about politics and numbers, we have to look at the population of our people in this country. Mm -hmm. We, what they say in their numbers, to make up uh, approximately 13% of the population. Mm -hmm. When we talk about trying to swing a vote on a national election, yeah. there may be some uh, level of trepidation. No. Now, on local elections, right. however, there can be some mm -hmm. positive input. Mm -hmm. See, you have to remember, though, when you look at Cynthia McKinney, and I keep bringing this up, right. and Janice yeah. Majette, yeah. Uh, Cynthia McKinney mm. won yes. her seat. Mm. And what did Whitey do? Let's break up the district. They broke up, up the, the district. They call it redistricting. Re -ding. Re -ding. They okay. redistrict. Yep. Then they uh, financed uh, uh, someone to, a champion to go up Denise. against mm. Denise mm -hmm. Majette. Mm -hmm. Once they got uh, uh, Cynthia out, they flipped the game. Uh -huh. see. But then, the, wait a minute now. Okay. The people voted Holding her back in mm -hmm. to show you that the people in their heart of hearts they know what they see, but the oligarchy, the ruling power, okay. had flipped the game. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna tell me that you vote for the system? Why they gonna flip it? Why are you trying? Ladies, he, ladies, he even, we about to spar here. So <laughs> give us just a second. We about to go at it. With the gloves on. On with it. <laughs> First of all, Gideon. Yes. Sir. If you have people that are getting involved in the voting process, then you can demand transparency, Gideon. Okay? Because Obama and the rest of the Senate and the Congress are always talking about these third world countries that they put dictatorship. They're telling Russia right now, well, democracy and young guys need transparency. Well, you hold their feet to the fire, Gideon. Mm -hmm. But see, you got people like yourself and people that think voting is some conspiracy that don't even partake in it, Gideon. Uh, two I words. <laughs> Iran Contra. Mm. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me go, go back to right. We do do that. I think that it's talking as like you said, coming from nationalism. One of the things that affect us is that we're not. We don't operate on a united front. That's true. You know, it's one of the things the sister was saying about when we talk about immigration. The reason that immigration is such a big deal now and a hot topic now is because of the influx of our Latino brothers and sisters, and right. they make this right. yes. one of the criteria that anyone who's uh, pandering or catering to them must address this issue exactly. right. by by the incarceration mass incarceration affecting us and what happens to us after we release from these systems by that being such a prominent factor in our community I think that we have to unify and say listen before we vote for anybody Democrat Republican right. white black whatever then these issues need to be addressed but if right. we're not registered to vote if we don't show up as a bleep on the radar uh -huh. then we always be what they do to us now divide us this is we had a right. black uh, we had a black political party that inbuilt you know what I'm saying? But what they did by us not being unified uh, and really strong on what we want as a people, other peoples were able to come in and promise us things. That's right. Because we have to understand that I think we're divided. A lot of us live for this so-called American dream. Come on. Uh -huh. So when they give us promises of the American dreams, then we will leave off the masses of the people. We will leave off the lumping proletarian and we will go and start and we'll sell out basically. That's what we're calling the sellout. So I think that Awareness has to be brought to this issue. Mm -hmm. We have to launch campaigns behind this. Like right. the sister says, and one of the things I want to ask you about your program, is it open for brothers that you do, you know, when you explain about the, uh, you don't call them bonding letters, you call it I a- I call it insurance. 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 Sure. Uh, actually, we do, uh, I do workshops with Trinity House. Okay. That's all men. Um, do some things with the Fulton County Accountability Code court which is mostly men mm -hmm. I have no preference because I know backgrounds are, have no preference right. 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 so right. I, I'm willing to facilitate and educate all mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's that's perfect I think that that's going to be the ticket I, I think so too you know, we just have to get on one accord this is an issue that affects us I mean and I'm like the sister I can speak that how it has million. 80 million how it affected million. me directly well, Look see, at this that is another thing here right. let, okay. me, let me and show you because see I'm, obviously I, I, you may have picked up I'm not into voting <laughs> and let me just use this as the example the farmers the farmers in this country sued this government and won yeah okay uh, wait wait hold because the farmers been paid Wait a minute now. <laughs> Have the farmers <laughs> been paid? No. So, so Gideon, what you, what you do you stop and wait on y'all to deliver us <laughs> like they did Noah and just... I'm just asking, wait a minute now. I'm, I'm just saying. It's more realistic. Now, what do I... Okay, this is the next issue we could unify on. 
Reparation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Reparation. But if the farmers ain't been paid, who already, through a legal process, won that case, do you think this way fuck over human, you? Human, human right. rights violate. This is where it goes back to me. Oh, what I said, man, is human rights violate. We have to take it out of the civil thing. See, first of all, before any revolution, and I'm a revolutionary unapologetically, yes, but before right. any revolution is a start, the first, it has to, the farce and the hypocrisy of the system that you're under has to be shown. Thank you. You have right. to go Thank through you. the process. You know what I'm saying? One of the things that does does get me about, my people don't vote, we will complain about the uh, disproportionate sentences that the judges give us. We'll complain uh -huh. about about this and that, but we won't do anything to really try to make that change. And when you when you participate in the process, and they when they blatantly mm -hmm. deny you, right. then you have a right to take that to the world court. Right. It's That's one right. of the things that made uh, Malcolm X so dangerous. Right. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Is when he went up there, he made he told him my human rights are being violated. Right. How can you condemn South Africa for apartheid and be doing the same thing down here with Jim Crowism and Come separation on. and Come all on. of this in the South? That's right. Come on. So we have to show them that. Even though they, even though they full, we have to show our people that even though we fully participate in the political system, it's still a joke, and we have to show the world that we have tried this because the world will say, "Hey, well, look, this is what civil rights is. Civil rights is simply saying this: every we got the law. The law says that's it. It doesn't change the human heart. No, it says the law says the law says you can drink out of this water fountain. Come on, that's right. the law says you don't have to sit on the back of the bus. Right. That's what civil rights is. What the law says. The human rights violation is saying, look. Your law says this. We have tried to do this, and we're still being discriminated against. And you know why? So we have to take it to a human rights. You know why? You know what the next level is for us? It's again? bloodshed. And y'all scared to say it. See, at the end of the day, this white man hadn't done anything but unless he's he done what? Hold on. Shed I don't take blood. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <Miss Y 'all laughs> see, get it, get it. Okay, wait a okay get it. You're, you're confusing me. No. You're confusing me. Because your own Bible says, turn the other cheek. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar. See, that's why I don't buy that from y'all religious people about shedding blood, man. Well, I mean, you're right. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't buy that. Now, if you ask because me what... Because we're going to let the Lord handle everything. You're right. We're going to let Jesus just come but that, down. But that's a religion. That's not necessarily Bible. Right. Bible. Right. right. Okay, because exactly. For, because come for on, righteous... Come on, jump Not to go off on a tangent, but like, <laughs> for a righteous cause, like, it is worth fighting, and there's examples of that in the Bible. But I want to say that I think the solution is twofold. Okay. Like, you... I, personally, I believe that you can work within the system while changing it. Mm -hmm. So, like, with us, the Ban the Box campaign is within the system. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're saying mm -hmm. we want to change the way the applications are reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of the system, me personally, I encourage entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Like, we should be the ones creating the jobs. We should be the ones hiring. Right. Mm -hmm. if, if formerly incarcerated individuals are the ones hiring, they're probably going to be a lot more likely to hire someone else who's formerly incarcerated. Absolutely. So Absolutely. you can do Absolutely. both at the same Definitely. time. Absolutely. Right. Well, that's the thing that we did talk about, how the Europeans do hire the formerly incarcerated on the jobs that they run mm -hmm. they'll get a white boy just out of prison with a fourth grade education and make him your supervisor mm -hmm. and have you training Boys See, so this stuff. is the part of the a good old boy network that we through legislation but you uh, said we need the formerly you know they got a uh, tea party we need to form a coffee party I'll tell you with that well, well, I'm I'm with I'm with with that we need to form the coffee him. party okay, but that's a political you know, process though get it it is a political it's process it's a political process but it's so an activist got, process you need your cooperation. Not like the Milk Toast uh, Action Network that Mar uh, Sh uh, Sharpton serves in as he supports the people who killing us. You keep giving power to those people. Do you know the arena? Oh, okay. You're there having you go. a right. government. And, and one of the on things is, oh, well, the arena. Arena. It's, it's, like, it's like one of the things that what I do love about the organization is that, that it's going into an education. To me, the biggest thing is education, right? It's education. Okay. It's about education. It's about educating, the, uh, educating our people to the laws that work against us and I agree with you like I said I'm not a reformist but I do feel that we have to participate when you're at war you can't tell a man how to fight when you're That's fighting right, for your right. survival uh -huh. excuse Dang. me when you're fighting for your survival you have to join every organization throw rocks <laughs> wave sticks <laughs> cut the grass whatever whatever it's going to take so we do have to do that but but first of all educating our people showing them the important how this is a major issue yeah. I think one of the things we were talking about early was Willie Lynch yeah. and yes. how we're divided yeah. see if I I'm thinking right. that's why this was so good to meet you ladies uh -huh. because I you know I've, I've experienced as a young man 17 going through the whole system coming home uh, having done really the sad part 17 to 25 so having basically mm -hmm. done my adult lessons adolescence uh -huh. doing my adult
taught lessons in just the craziest place That's and coming right. home and trying to uh, get acc adjust, you know what I'm saying, get acclimated again to the outside and then on top of that trying to find gainful employment. Exactly. So we have to, we have to, you know, that has to be a thing to dress you and, and to see um, brothers and sisters actually teaching these things. One of our thing is cultural, lack of culture. I was talking to a brother, Brother DJ, and we were talking about this economic uh, economic, yeah, brother DJ, and we were talking about economics, and he said the whole trick to economics, and I'm paraphrasing him, brother, I hope I do him some justice. Uh -huh. He said the whole trick is we don't value one another. You're he right. said we can open a store, sell all the name brand clothes, the sneakers, the hats, in the hood next to black folks, and they will jump on the bus and go to Linux. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So we have to have right. that, that value and that education. And once we start to value ourselves and know that I alone am not going through this, you know, there's other people going through this from, you know, people who I would have never known your story had I just met you on the street, never known that you were affected by something like this. Mm -hmm. So once you meet people that are affected like this and we start coming together and really see that this is a major issue mm -hmm. and forming groups mm -hmm. that address them and, and having us out here support those groups yeah. that, are, that address this. Right. But one of the things is, and I can be long-winded, what can we do? Because I can't be, brother. You know, I like this. It's Malcolm X, Mike. Right, right. It's Malcolm X, Mike, brother. I'm feeling like Malcolm X. Go ahead, man. <laughs> but what can we do as just, you know, everyday people? How can we, whether it be through nine to five or just in our everyday living, what can we do to bring awareness and attention to this and start to help bring about a change? Mm -hmm. One thing I, I want to thank you for having us on the show because this show. Yeah. will bring a lot of awareness exactly. where it hasn't been um, in your organization. Uh, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people in your organization or in your circle may not know about Band the Box. Mm -hmm. And not just the word Band the Box, mm -hmm. but actually what it is, what it means, and how it affects us. Okay. Uh, bring awareness to them. And again, we have meetings at 9 to 5. It's called the Recidis I mean the uh, Reformed Citizens Committee Member mm -hmm. Meeting. Mm -hmm. And we have them every first Wednesday of each month mm -hmm. from 5.30 to 7.30 at IBEW Building. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where, like you say, he likes to strategize. That's where we sit, we plan, we strategize. Who is our target? Who do we need to get to to make these changes? That's right. And uh, so that's one of the things, a couple of things that you guys can do. Mm -hmm. And Charmaine may have something else that she would like to interject. Well, I think that, that that's it. I think on a maybe a smaller scale is that when you hear friends and family members talking about formerly incarcerated people in a negative way, mm -hmm. actually speak up. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's, that's how you create a cultural shift. Right. Like right now, if you have a record, people automatically demonize you right. or feel like right. it's okay right. to talk about you like you're less than or mm -hmm. you're completely bad. Mm -hmm. So just in your own personal networks, speak up. Mm -hmm. You know, when you hear people say negative things or write people off because of their criminal record. Like I think some of it has to be a cultural shift. It, it, yeah, it, is. Culture. it is. But I'm gonna tell you, it's, it's different from where I come from. You know what I'm saying? I'm born in, you know, I'm from Cleveland, but I'm off in the street. What? Cleveland area, Lorraine, Ohio. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one one of the things is, in in where I'm from, it's actually a rite of passage. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been locked up as a black man, you soft. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's unfortunate. You have more coming home parties for brothers coming home prison than we do going away parties for brothers going home to college. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's how do we have that culture shift? It's become so acceptable in our community. Like I said, that it's the new it's the new norm. Mm -hmm. Right. And here, basically, when they're coming home, they're coming home to more crime. Mm -hmm. Right. Their right. uh, their partners are, they, if they come out and ask for help, they're going to offer work mm -hmm. instead of offering education mm -hmm. or how you can connect with this organization. How can you learn about push your next steps mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be on the corner trying to work again because mm -hmm. it's going to send you right back. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, uh, and, and, and again, like you say, it's our own people. Yeah. It's our own culture yeah. that is holding us down. So, that's right. I, I'm happy to be in this circle with you guys because mm -hmm. it, if I had had this, mm -hmm. It wouldn't have took me 40 years. I wouldn't have been in the wilderness for 40 years. I'd have been out a long time ago. Let me throw this out there because, see, in this particular environment. I'll give you the gal. There you go.
You know, the term education, yeah. right. I believe it's a catch-all phrase that has been utilized in this system because when we were growing up, we said, all you need to do is get the education. Mm-hmm. You get education, you get everything happen. And they have shown us that education is not the end all and be all. Now, let me just say okay. this, because we, <laughs> we have Carter G. Woodson. Okay. Yes. His book was entitled, okay. The Miseducation the of the Negro. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, so at the end of the day, you can have an education and see, and I reference our ancestors. We have our grand, grandmothers, mm-hmm. great grandmothers. They couldn't read, write. Mm-hmm. They owned land. Yeah, they they had businesses. Yeah, they, they had. They were able to develop communities. Uh, Morris Brown, anybody? Descendants of slaves. And so we had, now we have all these MBAs, mm-hmm. and BAs, and all the other A's, all the members of the alphabet. And we done lost more land, more. We ain't saving. We don't have. So wait a minute now. Well, how do we rationalize this concept of saying? It's all about education, but with the people who had the least education had the most and was okay. able to save them. All right. I'm a, you know, I'm key for book education okay. and okay. the PhDs and all that, but That's I'm talking right. about self-education. Right That's right. I'm not talking about them books. Right. I'm talking about what it takes to make you survive. Okay. Learn about your rights. Okay. That's right. You need okay. to know about your rights. You that. need to know about these politicians that's promising you all this stuff mm-hmm. that they ain't gonna give you. Thank you. You need to learn about them. Exactly. And you do need to register to vote, even though you say you don't want to. No! <laughs> Even though you say you don't want to, because right. every vote count, but you need to know who to vote who for. Who to vote for. Right. So do you and guys see any opposition like coming from, because what you're doing is major work, and then, yes. you know, we live in a capitalist society, so you're about to cut into some big money, especially with those them privatizing prisons and Thank things you. of this nature, and then you're teaching about insurance, so, because that was one of the things, I love, man, I love this conversation, especially what we were having earlier, that was one of the problems I ran across. When I was younger and incarcerated, you know, I was like, well, I'm going to get my little GD and I'm going to get a, um, I'm going to get a trade. So I learned, uh, I'm a certified automotive painter, you know, automotive painter. That's what I said. All right. So I went into Mako and they looked at that certificate and said, Georgia Department of Correction on the bottom. It wasn't a wrap. It was a wrap. <laughs> so the whole thing about. Um, the bonding and the insurance. Do you do you see foresee any oppositions from lobbyists and politicians and the people that own these private private prisons? All right, because add on to that, you guys have the numbers in Maryland to prove that the employment rate actually dropped because of the, the abandoned box. But go ahead. The unemployment rate in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Massachusetts. Right, Massachusetts. I'm sorry. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, where it was six percent of people that had backgrounds and the box was there, but once Massachusetts removed that box, sixty percent. Sixty dropped from. 60 mm. that got employed mm. because let, the box was gone. Let me say and, this. And that's because they got in and right. got the opportunity that's to right. tell their story. Okay. Right. Why? Mm. Let, me, let me give it in the arena moment for here. Come on, come on. Georgia. 60%. Okay, mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me I'm ask this. This is a powerful question here. You being haven't been in the penal system, I haven't been in the penal system. Most people are probably at this table are in some time. We're going to let y'all have to put it out there like that. What responsibility would you say that the penal systems have in not only training, but having a pipeline to jobs after the prisoner has come out? Mm. Seems like they have they have sponsorship, Welding. they have well, they have all these various right. they should have a direct mm. pipeline mm. from the prison house to, to employment. And if you don't, why would you think they don't? Because they want you to come back. Exactly. <laughs> they want that free labor. They want exactly. it's slave labor. Slave labor. Exactly. <laughs> they want you to come back. Because all. So yeah. that's where we, as a person, has to take it on our own and move forward and not to go back. Mm-hmm. Prison is an introduction to a new crime. See. Or you sit there and contemplate on how to do the crime that you Did are better. that better. <laughs> it's not rehabilitation. Exactly. You rehabilitate yourself. 
So you see what they said there? See, they talked about the schools be a, being a pipeline to the prison it is. industrial, you know, from school to prison. Yeah. But what about from prison to job? Right. See, once again, this is why I never I never vote for this system. Because they know what they're doing. They know that they're not directing these people who are coming out of jail. Yeah. What? But like to job. painful and jo- But you came into the system, so yes. why not have representation? That's right. Right. Like whether or not you choose to vote or not, you're still paying, paying your taxes. Paying taxes. You're still paying you, for well, that. Well, that's why America came in. It, well, see, we have, have being taxed without representation. We have mm-hmm. taxation without representation, mm-hmm. and that's why this country but fought against Europe. But whose fault is that? But here it is. This is what we were talking about: civil rights. Right. This is whose fault is that? If even though we know that, if you don't prove that to be true, you can't have a complaint because all they will do is say, "Well, we gave you on paper the right to vote. It's you. It's your right. fault. You don't have representation." Right. 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 But that's because, what I'm saying. Hold on, hold on. That's, that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying when you when you show them when you fully when you participate and they still discriminate, you say okay. They say well the law say and you say we went by the law. Right. So now you wonder why we throwing bricks. Uh-huh. Well, that's what that's, that's what, what Martin Luther King hold said. On, hold on, hold on. He, what did Martin say? He said yeah. that America wrote us what a no, no, blank get it, check get it, get and it no. came back See, what. I got. I'm gonna bring you some proof and evidence, Gideon. Case in point: the LGBT community. Uh oh. They say, you know what? Mm-mm, y'all don't give us. Big that. Place in America. They say, well, what do you want? Uh, 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 what do you want? Uh, uh, what do you want, uh, what do you want? What do you want for your vote? Hispanics. The Dream Act. You know what I'm saying? So what, let you, me you tell you something. No demands. Their revolution was so serious. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, that the way that they maneuvered and did that, that now marriage is legal. The That's definition right. of marriage is legally changed. changed. You better not right. speak. So you can't tell right. Right. You can be called a nigger. But if you say Faggot, that's a hate crime by the side. But what, what I'm telling you, all of that is political movement. It, is political. it, it is was right. a revolution that had taken place without a shot being fired. True. Mm. So we have to come together and we have to unify yeah, you like go. that. There you well, go. but there, there is a method to that madness to undermine the family structure, and that's what the political agenda of the sexual deviants are, is to redefine Gideon, family. Contradict, no, 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 contradicting. Gideon, most of the government are angelical Christians. Oh, my okay? goodness. So, in the same angelical Christian that had slavery. At least in name. Let me at tell you something. Name. It's like the sister said. At least in name. Everything, everybody. See, we, we as African people in America, we get caught up into all that. Right. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, everybody yeah. votes right. and moves what is best for them and their people. That's right. These same people that yesterday hated homosexuality. And right. All now you got the governor. they vote well, for it. They talk, well, I changed my daughter is gay. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now they're coming out. It's always good for the people. And if they have a problem with homosexual, the next day he'll be banning his daughter. Exactly. So there is no love except for what's better for that people. We are people that have come in. We identify with every other struggle, and we get behind Think every of the other. Right. We get behind every other struggle. We get behind. The immigration, like you said, we get we get behind them not letting Latinos have their holidays. That's right. I would just whatever other struggle. And then when we say us as a people have to come together and address these issues, like you said, it's mm-hmm. culture shock. With that, that Negro shouldn't deal with he did. He went to winter jail. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. it. Right. That's that's it. it. That, that divide that, that, right. that goes the block. We right. will, we will support everybody. Back to Willie Lynch. Back to Willie Lynch. Back to Willie Lynch. Right. Right. See, that's back why it's a, a spiritual component that this system will. Ne- you may not be able to understand. Many of us don't. But there's a spiritual component to our existence in this plane, on this natural plane, that will galvanize us at the right time. See, the time hasn't come, but we are seeing, as you're saying, this system is being revealed, its inadequacies, the injustices, and sooner or later, the mighty and the holy people going to wake up. Mm-hmm. I think okay. with, with what we're doing around um, advocating for the rights of the formerly incarcerated, I think it is the time. It is. Like, people right. are realizing is. in Georgia we're spending a billion dollars to incarcerate folks. Uh-huh. So you're seeing million. the governor, regardless if he's if he's doing it because he actually understands that this this system is in, inhumane or if it's just costing us too much money, but he's actually formed a reentry council, mm. you know, yeah. and we yeah. were able to submit in the boxes a proposal right. to that right. reentry right. council. That's right. April 14, Governor Dilley issued an executive order to ban the box on all state employment applications. Right on. So, give me a state job. So we. 
we are working. Nine to five is working around the city. I mean, around the state as to bringing uh, other counties together right. mm-hmm. wow. because we. It was recommended through general through general assembly that mm-hmm. it goes before legislation, but That's it didn't right. make it. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing then is organizing Albany. Savannah, mm. uh, Macon, mm-hmm. and hopefully the next three other counties with the largest amount of people coming back. Mm. And we're organizing. So next year session, we want to come together and demand that this be legislation, that's not impressive. just. Yeah. That's yeah. Impressive. Yeah. That's that's that would be that would help. That is a good yeah. work. That is a good so, work. But we yes. need to get our people on board. Right. You know? and, 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 right. and that's where the educate. That's the education Cases. I'm talking about. Uh, okay. I'm not talking about Morris Brown Clark College. I'm yeah. talking about that education. Really? And that's where it becomes politically advantageous. Yes. When they see, okay, well, Savannah's behind it, Albany's behind it, it then becomes to their benefit to mm-hmm. ban the box that's or to right. end this type of discrimination. Absolutely. That's you right. know, that's when you can show that right. people do care about this and you can do it and you'll actually win voters, mm-hmm. whether right. you know you're doing it for the right reasons or not, or not. you're doing it. But that's 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 what it right. all boils down to. And then while we're talking about formerly incarcerated people, definitely have to have to mention our brother Dr. Glasgow, who has a yes. you know Dr. Glasgow? Can, can I? Yeah. Okay, well then say no more. That's and that's what we and that's one of the representatives sitting over to the sides. You can't see one of the representatives for formerly incarcerated people. We work with Dr. Glass. I work with Dr. Glasgow on formerly incarcerated people. So I know definitely you and I will be working together on some things and look forward to seeing. Um, did, did you just say alliance? And oh alliance. man, that's, that's, all, that's it. That's the only way to get some things done. But see, yeah. the alliance has to be in the prison industrial complex and the type of influences that we would say that the legislators should have to help them to create programs so that the people can be trained, Giddy. they're not doing it. So Giddy. therefore, we need to as a, not a voting block, not a voting block, but as an activist community, go and encircle some of these prison and complex and say, we demand that you make our children, give our children access to jobs. You working them every day. That's right. You working them every day. Shout them down like the walls of Jericho. They're they working them, they work them every day, but they actually train on them every day. That's yes. right. So, See? That's with right. supervision, so, and you're right. They need to come out to a job. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Simple as that. See? They need to. But I, I think that that's too much, Gideon. I think that's too much relying on the good nature and the goodwill of human right. beings. And you're relying on the good nature and the goodwill of human beings who have historically shown that they have no purpose and no need for the African head in America. So that if we don't get, go back to what you said, and I will agree with that activism, it goes back to us forcing them to put in place policies and that's things right. of that nature that benefit, and legislation, legislation and things of those nature that benefit us. You know what I'm saying? We can't be a people that are just upset about it. You know you and I are spiritual people. I'm a spiritual person. Absolutely. But I understand that the old saying is God who helps uh, God helps those who help themselves. Absolutely. So we have to get out here. We have to use every weapon at our disposal every to try to empower us as a people. And if that is the, if we have the people articulate enough and politically astute enough to go in here and break these things down and get some legislation and policies in play yes. to empower us as a people, then we should, even if we're not the people that are politically astute enough, because I'm not the, the, the brightest cat in politics, but if I have someone who is willing to take this burden on, go in there and lead the charge, then at the very least, Mm-hmm. I should be behind them lending my support because it affects and it helps. It affects us in a very positive way. The whole community. Well, let me make a correction. One and three. We are going to make the charge. See, that's one thing that black people, we keep messing up. And that's what I'm, so I'm against religion is because we always look for one person. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. We have to have a council. See, a lot of people don't know. They talk about white supremacy, all that. You know, monarchs come from Europe. Yeah. We ain't never operated on that. Right. We operated in councils. Right. So when the European came across the African, they started to form senates. Yeah. They started to form congresses, yeah. you know, councils yeah. and parliaments. Yeah. That comes from us. Right. Right. So mm-hmm. we as a force need to do that. Mm. Well, again, when we look at the political structure of the uh, prison industrial complex, the military industrial complex, all these organizations that are centered around the government, mm-hmm. there has to be an active agenda on organizations like People's Agenda, Rainbow mm-hmm. Push, and that's what that's the, the arena. Uh, uh, yeah, right. People's General Rainbow Push. The uh, arena. The arena. The <laughs> arena. I wanted to ask you guys, are you members of any of these organizations? Because uh, People's Agenda, uh, they meet every Monday at, uh, no, it's Tuesday, I'm sorry. Uh, every Tuesday at uh, 
from Twitter. Can, 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 can I hit the gavel real quick? Of course, it's your show. They're making greater strides in those organizations. I'm as simply as I'm saying concerned. you got the dean of the civil rights movement, and, Joseph Lowry, and you got Jesse Jackson, and you got you got Sh- uh, Charmaine you and Sister Owen. All I'm so asking, now you say this is a okay. question: Do you guys have representatives that go to these organizational meetings to let them know what you are doing and to see if they can assist you? That's my question. We're not members, but we, we have, have gone to the spoke. People's Agenda. Yeah, yeah. we have presented Band the Box at the People's Agenda. Excellent. What did they turn up their nose to you? No, they no, were actually no. receptive. They were yeah. actually really receptive to it. Oh, Helen really Butler okay. and, and, and the whole family okay. at uh, People's Agenda. I mean, these are community activists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have okay. de- definitely nothing in common yeah. other than we're all fighters. Yeah. They're going to fight within the system. I say forget the system. Right. The creator go. Because at the end of the day, the white man has achieved nothing without military action and blood They take what they want. Okay. We're going big and talk about voting and they're changing their home. Well, if it was, uh, people's agenda with Linda Hill hand out to 95, then my apologies. If you guys are sincere, go ahead, Yang. I'm just this, no. It's um, now. I was just looking at it. It's it's. I agree. And to say this, and then we want to give them an opportunity with five minutes to get out any contact information yeah, or yeah. any things that we could do. But just to say this, that I'm like you, get it. You know, I'm a revolutionary. I don't believe. I'm not a reformist. I don't believe that our salvation is going to be found in reforming the system. But I am a strategist, That's and right. it simply means if someone is kicking your butt five times a day, going through the system, if that gets two butt whoopings off of me, that's only three butt whoopings I'm getting. A day and I would only I prefer three than five so we have to exercise every possible avenue we have I think the problem in the past in my conclusion has been the revolutionaries and the reformists the Willie Lynch have been divided That's we've right. been too I busy agree. fighting one another the revolution saying the only way we're gonna get it is through the gun brother right. and, the, and the reformists saying no the only way we're gonna get it is through the vote right. instead of looking as African people right. saying look we gotta use everything exactly. every exactly. option and we need to support you know as a revolutionary my support Important. My everything is behind you, sisters. Right. Right. And, it, and you know, and we need to support people who are saying, "Listen, here's my fight. Right. I take the charge up. I'm willing to get the research, the study, to do anything, right. and I'm willing to go in front of these legislators right. and fight this thing out. Right. What do you need me to do? I just need you to support and show up. That's, that's right. right. I that's can it. do that that's because right. I'm affected by it. Yes. You know what I'm right. saying? Yes. So. You know, we have to just keep on the lines. We have to all come together in an alliance. But, you know, to be brief, let's get out and make sure we get some contact information out on 9 to 5. Well, just to reiterate what um, Ms. Marilyn was saying, you can reach 9 to 5 at 404-222-0037. We also have a website, www. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the number one more time, 404-222-0037. The website is www.the9to5.org. Um, we also have a Facebook page for our national organization and local organization where you can get more information about the work that 9 to 5 is doing. All right. Okay. Uh, Ms. Wynn? Okay, and uh, we also have uh, what we call reformed citizens meetings. Uh, we believe that people that have been to prison, they are reformed when they're not That's committing right. crimes. Right so we have meetings every first Wednesday of each month at the IBEW building, uh, which is 501 Pulliam Street. And this meeting will be on the fourth floor. It's from 530 to 730 every first Wednesday of the month. And again, you can also reach me at 404-222-0037. Okay, get in. No, I just want to thank these beautiful yes, ladies yes, for coming yes. with their intellect and their power and their experience for our family, our viewing family in the arena. They weren't shy, nor were they afraid. Exactly. And hope that we can come back and stay in tune with us and come back and keep us updated. Yes. You know, on the progress, what we can do, how things are going, you know, because you got to understand now, y'all part of like the arena family. Man, that's right. right. We want y'all to talk about the unions. Yes. And yes. Yeah. I, mean, I like to know equal. how y'all going to do that in a right to, in a right to work state. Oh, right. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Equal yes. wages for women. I want to t- have that. Equal pay. That's, that's right. Equal pay. right. right. A livable wage, too. A livable a wage. That's right. Wage. That's right. That's right. So yeah. we're going to deal with these unions because I know you. Who plus plan? Wage. That's a union. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, you know, and, and, and this is just a setup because we've got Mr. Uh, Andrew Hunt that's going to come yes. down. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, Party. Who that is? Oh, he's Real going quick. to the Libertarian Party. He's going against Carter and uh, Mr. Uh, Dale. Oh, Right so, so, so you're gonna know, have us a governor, go, governor candidate on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get we're going to barbecue. 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 We're going to barbecue.
Oh, we're banning the box. That's what we're going to bring up. We're going to bring them back. We need to bring them back for that one. Yeah, and let them barbecue, I mean grill. Oh, right. We need to you know, ban the box or to get, get with us with some questions and this and that, man. Well, we can definitely uh, talk about Barbecue these. Right. 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 Yeah, really. Yeah, he's going to be a candidate and he knows the importance of. And I want to reach every candidate. Exactly. And he knows the importance of this show because this is one of the the rare shows that you're finding black nationalists talking politics on a national and international scale. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So we're not with the BS here, man. We're about getting the information out. So really, and this shows the power of voting, he's trying to appeal to that African constituency. Yes, he is. You know, he's trying to come. He's seen them all, you know. And so. like I said, to prove it, uh, Roy Barnes, like I said, he had Young Jeezy, T.I., and Gucci, man. Gucci. Uh, right. So that just lets you know the convicted felon is a reckoned force to be reckoned with. Because they already registered the post. Uh-huh. Yeah. That being said, we going to represent Uh-oh. with Irina. We Irina. out. See y'all next week. We yeah. out. Oh, we're going to deal with the Congo. The Congo. Oh, yeah. 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 Then the week after, we're going to deal with uh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi. 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 You bringing Marion back? Oh, getting Marion back? Marion. Okay. Okay. You bringing your car with him? Yeah. Thank, Thank you for having me. You got to come back. I know how to reach him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got to come back. I usually have a card on me. I know my cards are on me. Ms. Wynn, I'm going to have y'all back to the deal with the union. Okay. Because Yeah, you need to have them back when we had the governor on there. So we can have a young Yeah, yeah.